Thank you, Danny. The University of Alabama football team won their game yesterday, but that was one of the most painful games I've ever watched in my life. I kept having to look away from the screen saying, oh my. I wouldn't brag to anybody about that game. I wouldn't tell anybody we won. You know what they're celebrating at the University of Auburn? They're having a revival there, folks. They're having a revival at the University of Auburn campus. And hundreds of people have given their life to Christ. They started out in the gymnasium, and they had to dump that thing into outside. And Friday night, there were hundreds of people that were baptized in that little lake out there beside the school. And boy, I tell you what, I don't even know if, did Auburn win their game yesterday, boy? Well, so they won, so that's something else too. But that's not what they're shouting about at Auburn, I guarantee you. Man, the Lord has got loose there, and, and they just don't know what's going to happen next. That's so exciting. The Lord is always doing something. He's always up to something. And you, know, I, you can hardly ever point and say, well, it's because that person right there did the right thing. He, he made the right choice. He preached the right message, or they have it in, had it in the right place. No, when God gets loose, it's just, Jesus said, the Spirit is like the wind. You can hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it came from or where it's going. He says, the, the Spirit of God. You can't make the wind blow, but when it does, what great glory it brings to God. So if you pray for that. I don't know where that will wind up at, but I'm keeping my eyes and ears on that too. Thank the Lord for that. And that, that, those kinds of things are happening in our world, I believe. So uh, pray that it happens in more places and that it happens here. This is one of the points in the message this morning. It's uh, not everything, everywhere, all at once. There's a movie that uh, was very popular last year that was that a title. That's the title of the movie. Michelle Yeoh won an Academy Award for it. It's very popular. It's a very unusual, strange movie. It's about overlapping dimensions and realities, and where we're actually where time and space were mixing, and and everything was really happening all together, all at once. And it's it's. I, I probably, I kept rewinding different parts and watching it, and I don't know if I ever made sense of everything that was going on with it. It was a, an unusual movie. And that's the way it would have to be if you had a, something where everything was happening everywhere all at once in your life. Let's go on, Carter, to the next slide. In Mark's Gospel, in the first ten verses, we have a story where Jesus actually did another miraculous feeding. It says he fed 4,000 people. Well, the last time he did a feeding of miraculous nature, he fed 5,000. <laughs> I heard someone say, well, if the mainstream media was uh, reporting on Jesus today, they'd say, one, the, uh, the conservative news would say, Jesus walks on water. And the mainstream media would say, Jesus cannot swim. <laughs> yeah, they've got to give it a negative twist somehow or another. Jesus fed 4,000 people. Said, yeah, but you know, last time he fed 5,000 people. So this is not as good. And uh, something else, I say, you know, he had more to work with this time. Do you know how many loaves he had this time? It took him seven loaves of bread to feed 4,000. It was just five loaves the last time. And he had some fish. He didn't feed these people fish at all. This was far inferior. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was feeding 4,000 people. The number one is the next thing is not always bigger and better. We have a tendency of judging everything by what happened the last time or what happened in the past. The next thing is not always going to be bigger and better. Now I'm bigger than I've been in a long time. Actually I went to the doctor uh, this week and I've lost 8 or 10 pounds. I don't know where that, where that happened. It's probably because I was nursing a bad tooth and I just couldn't put as much in my mouth as I usually do. I'm bigger. I don't know if I'm better at many of the things. Sometimes I, I just have a hard time or a difficult time doing the average, ordinary, normal, everyday things. But I confess, 
that I expect the University of Alabama to win every one of their games and always play well. That's an unrealistic expectation for uh, of anything. I, I like today to be better than it was yesterday. I love you more today than yesterday, but not as much as tomorrow. You know, we say, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his side, I will buy. I love him better every day. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Well, that's... Those are just songs, really, because the next thing is not always bigger and better. If it were, we'd just explode one day. Sometimes we look at something like the feeding of the 4,000 and say, you know, I remember when it used to be better than that. I remember when it used to be bigger than that. I remember the last time that that happened, it was, it, it, we had fish. <laughs> Find some reason to badmouth. Oh, something wonderful. We have a tendency of doing that. It's just human nature. Let's go on to number two. Well, here's the, here's the passage. Uh, in John's Gospel, chapter 6, this is something else we see here. Then many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? This is John's account. When Jesus knew it himself and his disciples murmured at it, he said to them, Does this offend you? <laughs> A lot of times the people just right around Jesus had their feelings hurt about a lot of different things. They were offended. They were upset. They were unhappy. What and if you see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? He says, if I floated up into heaven, would that make you happy? Sometimes, you know, I think yeah, it, for modern people, you just die to get up in front of them and set yourself on fire to get their attention. Jesus said, if I just blasted off and floated up in the sky, he said, what would you think that would be special? <laughs> it's the spirit that quickens. The, the flesh prophets nothing. The words that I speak to you, they're spirit, they're life. But there are some of you that don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, this is why I said to you that no man can come to me except it were given to him by my Father. People don't get saved because me and you convince them to or talk them into it. People don't get saved because they decide to. People don't get saved because of anything that you and I arrange or manipulate. He says God is in complete control of who gets saved and who don't get saved. In verse 66 it says, From that time many of his disciples left and walked no more with him. So he fed 5,000 the last time, and this time he only fed 4,000. If he fed them again, it would probably be down to 2 or 3,000. It says, from that time, many of the disciples left him and didn't follow him anymore. Let's go on to the next slide. The crowd may not be declining. They may be winnowing. I don't hear many sermons or songs about winnowing. And even when John the Baptist was telling people that the Messiah was coming, he promised that the, whole, that the one coming was going to bring the Holy Spirit in fire to him. And John said he has his fan in his hand. Let's look at that passage. The next slide. You know what winnowing is? You see, they're taking wheat, barley, or rye, and they throw it up into the air. They have to beat it first. <laughs> Thresh it. They have to go to the threshing floor. So they beat it, and everything comes out of its husk, out of its shell. Separates the chaff. But it's all together. There are pieces of chaff or husk and, and grains of wheat. And so they would throw it up in the air, and sometimes, more popularly, they would take a big fan. And they had it spread out on the ground. I've seen this in India. I've been on the side of the road. They'd find a hard place and just throw rocks out on it and they'd thresh it and winnow it. Take a big fan and just wave that fan. And all the chaff, all the light, the, the, just the trash would blow away and leave the grain kernels behind. Winnowing. Let's go on. Let's look at that passage. In John 3, 9, John the Baptist says, 
And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to make of these stones to raise up children into Abraham. He said, God can make Christians out of nothing. And now also the axe is laid to the root of the tree, so that every tree which doesn't bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. John says, I am need baptize you with water and repentance, but he that is coming to me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You might have a ton of grain, but not all of that is wheat. Not all of it is rice. And one of the things that Jesus was doing in his ministry was, was winnowing. John said he has his fan in his hand. If you're the real deal, when the winds of difficulty and tribulation and trial, that's God testing and trying, when the winds come, you're going to remain because you're real, you're genuine, you're true. But that which is false and flimsy and fake, it just flies away. It just flies away. There are people throughout my whole ministry, I've seen them just walk away from church. I've seen them walk away from God. I've seen them just kind of, uh, here, here they were, and they'll say, you know, I used to go to church, and that's where I used to go to church. And, and their, their lives were dedicated to God, and then they're, all of a sudden they're gone. You can say, well, I sure could, do wish we had them back. Well, they, they blew away for a reason. God probably intentionally allowed something to happen or caused something to happen in their world that just literally blew them away. Because what he's intent on is not just getting a big, as big a pile as he can possibly get. He wants to get to the grain. And that's what he's doing. Let's go on. Number three, the Pharisee kind can't see signs. Look at this, Mark chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. The Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. <laughs> yeah, we know you just fed 5,000 people, and you fed 4,000 people. We'd like you to see you do something special. <laughs> You've walked on water and cast out demons. You've, uh, you've given sight to the blind and you've given hearing to the deaf. But, you know, we kind of like to see a trick. Can this, can, you know, come on. But he sighed deeply in his spirit. This is the second time Jesus sighed today. He goes, <sighs> He sighed deeply this time in his spirit. He said, why does this generation, now we think of generation, we think of a, uh, age group in your family, like that's my, my family genealogy. But sometimes the word that is often translated, sometimes translated generation, just means kind. This, uh, this group, this kind of people, this kind of people, why does this kind of people, this, this kind, seek a sign? Uh, surely I say you, no sign is going to be given to these kind of people. If you can look around in your world, if you can look around in this world, and you cannot see evidence of the workings of God, you might be a Pharisee. If you see no evidence of the power of God, it might be because you're one of these kind. Because God is working. God is moving. God is active. If you cannot see the evidence of the great working of God in our world, it may be that your looker is not working. The Pharisees were right there. Can you imagine them walking up to Jesus, the miracle worker, and say, do a trick for us so that we'll know that you're the real thing. Jesus said, well, I'm not going to perform for you, I guarantee you. And if you've been watching me as closely as you have been, and you haven't seen the work and power of God, your looker's broke. 
The Pharisee kind cannot see signs. They can't see the power of God. They don't have the ability. Even if he would have done a trick for them, it would probably scare them to death. That's right. And they, Jesus said, I don't want to waste anything on you guys. If you've been watching me and you haven't seen God working, he said, you, your looker's broke. You don't have the ability. You're completely spiritually blind. So if you're filled with pessimism and despair and you can just kind of look out over the world today and you see no evidence of the working of God, your looker's broke. Let's go on. Beware of bad leaders. They're getting into the boat next. They're in Mark God, chapter 8, verse 13 through 21. And when they're getting into the boat, Jesus said this kind of out of the blue. <laughs> I think they had to listen to him all the time and just kind of keep one ear cocked because he was always kind of, somebody just say something. And he would say, beware the leaven. Now leaven is yeast. He'd already told them, you know, you take a little bit of yeast and you hide it in some dough, it, it makes the whole loaf of bread rise. It affects that whole loaf of bread. He said, it, it, it's just a little bit, just a little bitty touch of yeast, and it just infects and affects a whole piece of bread. He said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. Beware of bad leaders. Do you know what a bad leader is? Do you know how to recognize a bad leader? <laughs> I think that's maybe one of the primary attributes of our world today. I look at the American populace and I say, you guys don't know, you keep electing. You know, people say, we need term limits. Every politician has term limits. Don't vote for them. If you don't vote for them, they can't go back to Washington. They're limited by how many times you and I send them there. If you're expecting them to put some kind of artificial barrier on themselves so that they can only serve in Congress for so many years, they're never going to do that. The only way to get rid of them, if someone's a bad leader, is vote them out. Now you can talk about bad politicians and bad religious leaders, but do you know who gave them their jobs? We did. We gave them their job. They didn't just come in and say, well, I'm just going to be the president. Or I'm going to be the pastor. No. We took them and we put them in that position of leadership. And Jesus, you know, there probably are some very good people. Some very good people that you ride and you're down on them. You're critical of them. And you reject them. And you will not follow them. And you may even be some of those who, you know, Jesus is a good leader and they're ultimately going to nail him to a cross. They didn't know the difference between a good leader and a bad leader. They stoned Stephen, one of the first deacons, to death. Do you know what a good leader is? Or are you part of their persecution and their and criticism and rejection. Tell you what, a good leader is going to want you to go where you don't want to go, to do what you don't want to do. A good leader is going to put you in a position where you're going to be forced to confront the sin that's in your life if he's a good leader. He's going to lead us to God and to truth. Beware of bad leaders. Let's go on, Carter. <laughs> you remember the we talked about the deaf and the mute man last Sunday? And Jesus put his fingers in his ears, touched his tongue, and then spit. <laughs> okay. In this story of the healing of the blind man, he he made some more spit, and he made some more clay, and he put it on the guy's eyes. This is the story, and he says, uh, he said, I can see, I can see, see, but, and, and someone said, what do you see? He said, I see men as trees walking. We want everything to be.
to be instantaneous. We want it to be now. We want it to happen immediately. This is an occasion where Jesus said, you know what, sometimes what I'm doing takes several steps. And sometimes it happens gradually. And sometimes you've got to go through a, a time where things are a little bit blurry before they come into focus. No. God is not interested at all in doing everything, everywhere, all at once. So that last slide there, Carter, this is what I think men like trees walking might look like. <clears throat> kind of looks like some inferior healing, doesn't it? Kind of looks like, he, Lord, I need an adjustment. Lord, you didn't do a very good job. Ah, oh, he always does a good job. He does an excellent job. But sometimes when Jesus does things, he doesn't do it all at once. He doesn't do it everything, everywhere, all at once. You're going to find, as I have found, that the Lord hardly ever does anything the way I think he ought to do it. And sometimes I want to confess to you, when I'm down on my knees, when I'm crying up to heaven, I say, Lord... Everything just looks like it's out of focus. Everything looks blurry. Everything just doesn't, I can't see. I can't, I can't see it. It's just not happening. And it's really easy just to accuse him of some kind of a failure of the miraculous. It's not that at all. There's some point to it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll never know what it is. Or why is it important for me to first see men as trees walking before I can see clearly? You might be in a place right now where things look foggy, things look cloudy. I like the Joni Mitchell song where she says, I, I've looked at life from both sides now, from, from win and lose. You know, Paul says that in Ephesians, pardon me, in uh, Philippians chapter 4. He says, you know, I've been hungry and I've been full. He said, I've been free and I'm, now I'm in prison. He said, I, you know, I've kind of seen, I, I've, I've had uh, want and I've had plenty. He said, I, I've seen it from both sides. God may be leading you right now through a, a foggy, blurry time where you just can't see the end of the road. You might not even be able to see his footprints or the path. But that's okay. Trust him. He's doing something. And ultimately, things will come into focus. What's God doing in your life? If you don't see him doing anything in your life, your looker might be broke. If it's broke, what you're looking for and what you need can only come from God. It can't come from other people. And you may not just, you just may not be able to see it at all. And it may look like it's thinning out, like it's declining, decaying, like it's going away. It's just getting down to the grain. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for your word. And Lord Jesus, what a what an exciting what an exciting journey what an exciting time it must have been to follow you about and to watch you and to listen to you or we don't always know what you're doing or where you're going but we're with you and nothing's going to blow us away nothing's going to blow us away at all give us Focus and clarity. Teach us to trust you no matter what when things look like they're less or non-existent or fuzzy. <laughs> Lord, if there's anybody here today that needs a touch, they need it from you and not from me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, this is our time of invitation. If God's spoken to you, would you come? Do you need to pray at our altar? Do you need to make some kind of decision? Is God leading you?
Is he calling you to make some decision, some